You crafted a trail in, in your press conference. You're staying on the ballot in the red and blue states. In the swing states, people have said that this could come down to 15 counties in 11 different states, 11 of those counties in seven states, including where we are right now, that you said you, you don't want to be on the ballot there. You don't want people to vote for you there. Do you think you can be the determining factor in this presidential election? because of the positioning. Of course, if they don't get to 270, if they tie it 269, whole different ball game. But if this comes down to independence in those 15 counties in those 11 states, and you've given your support to the Trump candidacy, do you feel like you may very well be the one that selects the next president of the United States by your influence? Well, I, I, that's possible, but I, I, I would have, if I had stayed on the ballot in the swing states, and what I've done, Phil, is I were taking my name off the ballots in 10 states that are swing states. We're leaving them on, my, my name on in the red states and the blue states so people can vote for me without consequence. You know, they're, they're not going to be scared, oh, the bad guy's going to get elected. You know who's going to get elected in those states. So, and so it allows people to vote for me who want to vote for me without any consequence. But, well, we recognize from our polling is that if I stayed in the race, it would have almost certainly swung the race to Vice President Harris, who was trying to throw me off the ballot in all the states, ironically. But um, I thought that that would not be a good outcome for her, you know, because I differ with her on all the issues, on the issues of war, on the issues of censorship, on the issues of chronic disease, and uh, many, many other issues. RFK Jr. is all in to make America great again. That's right, RFK Jr. is straight up MAGA now. And not just that, he's actually taken that and he spun it into something that he supports as well. It's called MAHA, and it means make America healthy again. Kind of a spin to MAGA, but you get it, right? He also posted something on his X account that mirrors his team up with Donald Trump. The friendship between President John F. Kennedy and Senator Barry Goldwater. The two people who had differences yet remain friends. The common factor between them is their love for the United States of America. And it's why he's going against liberals and how they perceive the MAGA crowd. In a post on X, he explained that the phrase make America great again is kind of a call back to what our nation once was. In his words, he recalled the country as being a nation brimming with vitality, with a can-do spirit and hope and a belief in and of itself. It was an America that was beginning to confront its darker shadows could acknowledge the injustice in its past and present, yet at the same time could celebrate its successes. The problem though is the term MAGA has been demonized by the mainstream media, and it's led to a lot of hate because the message has been completely distorted. And guys, before we get started, I'll ask that you take a second, hit the like button for the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, and thank you for sharing this video on social media. So they claim to be peaceful and be all about inclusion. Well, I think this says something a little bit different. Watch as this guy goes to a Biden protest in a Trump shirt and a Trump event in a Biden shirt. You can clearly see the difference between Trump and Biden supporters. I'm right into the Biden protest with a Trump shirt. Get your across the street. What the f is everyone so hostile? Go over there with your people. You guys are my people. Look. No, you're not. You're a Trump supporter. No. Biden says children, not Trump. No, no, stop, stop, stop. Don't snitch. Stop. I'm blending in. No, 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 no. Why is everyone so angry? I'm just oh, walking. Dumb or stupid? I'm just walking the sidewalk. No, you see how much hate it is over here? It's a public sidewalk. I feel like I'm gonna get jumped out. Oh, oh man. When you poured water on me, did it make you feel happy? Uh, yeah. I have to change shirts. Can I hide behind you? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Don't give me okay. I was feeling crazy today. Hey, come on. It's just so much more respect. Now, this is just one scenario, but you guys get the point here. And while RFK confirmed that he's not going to agree with Donald Trump on everything, they do agree on issues that matter to him a lot. That would be ending the Ukraine war, ending the censorship of Americans, protecting children's health, and many more. Now, what's amazing is that he says that this isn't even the best part, that Trump will have even more people added to the unity government. And here's the big reveal. Expect more Democrats to join President Donald Trump. Yeah, I'm going to be campaigning actively, I, the, I think, 
President Trump is going to make uh, a series of, of announcements about other Democrats who are uh, joining his campaign. And, uh, you know, I want, to, I want to make America healthy again, and so does President Trump. And it's not like him joining forces with Donald Trump was a small, insignificant event. It may have very well changed the direction of our country. And we've now got experts lining up saying that this could be the nail in the coffin. And the Harris campaign doesn't need this kind of news after her being officially nominated as their party's presidential nominee. So Tony Fabrizio, who is a pollster that I've known and worked with for a long time, is the lead pollster uh, for the internal Trump polls, released a memo today going through the seven battleground states that a lot of people have focused on, talking about North Carolina and Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona and Georgia. And in every single one of those seven battleground states, all of these RFK voters, RFK junior voters, break towards Trump. Some of them, Trump is getting two thirds of the of the RFK voters, and he's getting about four percent, three percent in these states. And in a state like Pennsylvania, where it could well come down to you know tens of thousands of votes, a half a point or three quarters of a point, that may well make the difference in who the next president is. A lot of people have said that Pennsylvania is going to be the key for Kamala Harris. Democrats cannot win the presidency without Pennsylvania. That is the conventional wisdom. If RFK Jr. makes the difference in other states and Pennsylvania, it really could spell the difference in this campaign. This should be taken seriously. This is a big day in the campaign. And let me tell you, Kamala Harris did not want this to happen on the first day after her convention. She wanted to come out of there riding high. This has completely and totally changed the subject. And now we're back playing on Trump's turf again. A country that is united toward a common goal. That sounds pretty good. But at this point, I'm expecting that attacks will be hurled toward RFK Jr. And it's already started from within his own family. But I guess he's looking to the future because he said something that's just made so much sense. In his words, he said, we have to love our children more than we hate each other. So we can all disagree and be at odds with one another. But we have to remember that the future of our country is at stake here. In 2008, 58% of young people lean Democratic. 2012, 53%. And in the last two major election years, that percentage held steady at 55%. But in 2023, that number dipped below 50% for the first time since 2005. And you'll notice right here, they've started to lean more Republican. And that's partly because of one specific group, young men. Young men have increased their support of the Republican Party from 35% to 48%, a 13 percentage point increase in just seven years. And this is a new trend. While 2020 exit polls show that young men backed Biden by 15 percentage points, a February 2024 Wall Street Journal poll found they favored Trump by 14 percentage points. And this loss of young male voters is a major issue for the Democratic Party going into November. The question now, can Kamala Harris bring some back? Now guys, I did a previous video where I go through what happened as to why he's now in support of Trump. And at the end of it, you might say that the Democratic Party can only blame their leaders for sowing so much division within their own ranks. Division that's now leading to a lot of panic within the liberal media. Guys, make sure you check that video out after this one. And as always, appreciate you guys being here. I'll be sure to see you guys on the next video.